Today in this lecture, we are uh, going to talk about the tetralogy of fellow or TOF, TOF. So basically, uh, tetralogy of fellow is uh, a right to left shunt. It is a congenital anomaly, an anomaly, a birth defect in the heart, which is present by birth, and it is basically right to left shunt. Now, in the last lecture, we discussed, uh, we discussed the PDA, pet, uh, patent ductus arteriosus, which was basically a connection present between the pulmonary artery and aorta, and basically uh, the PDA was a left to right shunt in which the blood from the aorta, the left side of the heart, was coming back into the pulmonary artery and into the lungs. So it. So PDA or the patent ductus arteriosus was a left to right shunt. But tetralogy of fellow is the right to left shunt. In this uh, uh, anomaly or this congenital anomaly, there are some problems due to which blood from the right side, blood from the right side of the heart is basically shifting into the left side directly. So what uh, are the uh, problems? So basically it is a tetrad or basically a combination of four different anomalies and the congenital anomalies in TOF or tetralogy of fellow are the pulmonary stenosis. Now this is the pulmonary artery. This is the pulmonary artery. Here we have the right atrium. Normally what happens is that blood from the body comes into the right atrium. It goes into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle it goes into the pulmonary artery. It goes into the lung. From the lungs it comes back into the left atrium. From the left atrium blood goes into the left ventricle. And from the left ventricle it is pumped into the aorta and it goes into the body. Just like this. Now this is the normal heart. Normally the left, the, the deoxygenated blood comes into the right atrium. From the right atrium into the right ventricle. And from the right ventricle in the pulmonary artery and basically it gets oxygenated in the lungs from the lungs it basically returns here it is it goes into the le left ventricle and from the left ventricle it directly goes into the body through the aorta now normally there is no connection between the pulmonary artery or the and the aorta or between the right at ventricle and the left ventricle no direct connection there is no mixing in in pda patent ductus arteriosus there was a connection between aorta and pulmonary artery but in tetralogy of fellow there is pulmonary stenosis that is the first problem this pulmonary artery which is basically taking the blood from the right ventricle into the lungs from the right ventricle into the lungs for example this is the right atrium this is the right ventricle and from the here it is taking the blood into the pulmonary artery now this pulmonary artery is stenosed there is stenosis now you can see now the, the point at which the blood is going into this pulmonary artery that point is stenosed so there is stenosis it is very difficult for the blood to go into the pulmonary artery or the pressure against which the blood has to move into the pulmonary artery is very high and there is another problem that is the overriding aorta overriding aorta now what is basically the overriding aorta normally the aorta is basically arising from the left ventricle or blood from the left ventricle is directly going into the uh, aorta what happens in the uh, tetralogy of fellow is that this aorta is overriding there is another congenital defect which is the vsd vsd or ventricular septum defect now the septum this is the septum for example this is the septum for example normally this septum will uh, uh, this septum will never allow or this septum, septum will basically separate the right ventricle from the left ventricle and there is no mixing. In, in tetralogy of fellow, there is a, a, this septum is basically having some aperture due to which blood from the right side can go into the left side or from the left side into the right side depending upon the pressure level. Now, there is a VSD and on that aperture, there is the aorta present. Now, aorta, this aorta normally, it is directly arising from the left ventricle. It is directly normally arising from the left ventricle. But here in this tetralogy of fellow, this aorta, for example, this aorta, it is or this is overriding an aperture between the right ventricle and the left ventricle, which is known as the VSD or the ventricular septum defect. If suppose, for example, here we had the uh, septum, there is a defect in the septum, which is the ventricular septum defect. And on that septum, there is the aorta. So basically, this aorta is overriding. This is overriding aorta. That aorta is basically sitting. This aorta is basically sitting on this aperture on the right and the left side. And this aorta is basically taking blood both from the right side and the left side, which normally should only take the blood from the left side. So this in normal heart, the blood directly from the left ventricle go into the aorta. But in tetralogy of fellow, apart from the pulmonary stenosis, apart from pulmonary stenosis and VSD, there is overriding aorta or the aorta, the position of the aorta is such that it will be or riding an aperture or it will be overriding a VSD and due to which the, the deoxygenated blood will also be going into the aorta. Now the final problem is, the final problem is the right ventricular hypertrophy. This is basically the right ventricular hypertrophy. If you see the muscle mass in the right ventricle, it is hypertrophied or the muscle mass has increased as compared to the left side. So these are the tetrad, these are the four problems uh, which are basically uh, forming the TOF or the tetralogy of fellow which includes the pulmonary stenosis this, the, 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 the opening of the pulmonary artery is stenosed due to which blood it is difficult for the blood to move into the pulmonary artery and there is a VSD there is a VSD due to which blood easily moves from the right ventricle directly into the 
left ventricle because the pressure here is very high normally the pressure in the pulmonary artery is less as compared to the pressure on the left side but as the pulmonary artery is stenosed so blood will easily move into the vsd the defect in the septum rather than moving into the pulmonary artery and or uh, an aorta is overriding that defect or aorta aorta this aorta basically this is overriding this defect it is present on top of this defect so it is basically taking the blood from the left as well as the right side and uh, due to high pressure in the pulmonary uh, due to high pressure in the pulmonary artery due to stenosis and due to uh, the high pressure in the aorta because right ventricle is pumping the blood into the aorta as well so there is hypertrophy of the right ventricle so these are the four problems the pulmonary stenosis overriding aorta right ventricular hypertrophy and vsd or ventricular septum defect which basically constitutes the tetralogy of fellow now due to this problem there is right to left shunt the blood from the right side is basically directly going into the aorta or onto the left side of the heart or into the left circuit now the blood is not going into the lungs the blood is not going into the lungs or it is very difficult for the blood to move into the lungs or very small amount of blood is going into the lungs for oxygenation oxygenation purpose so there are is cyanosis and the cyanosis the cyanosis basically increases when the patient with tof or the tetralogy of fellow starts exercising and these cyanosis spells are basically known as cyanotic spells or fellow spells fellow spell it happens because during exercise there is increased pressure in the lungs and decreased pressure in the aorta it is because during exercise or during exertion there is high pressure in the lungs it is very difficult for the blood to move into the lungs the blood is already moving with difficulty due to pulmonary stenosis and due to vsd but in exercise there is further increase in the uh, pressure in the lungs and there is slight decrease in pressure in the aorta due to which the oxygenation further decreases and cyanotic or fellow spells occur during exercise now this patient will have shortness of breath on exertion because the, the oxygen the oxygen is uh, the blood is not properly oxygenated so the patient will have cyanotic spells will have easy fatigability and uh, will short will be short of breath will have easy fatigability and will have growth ret retardation these patients they will not be having proper growth because their blood is not fully oxygenated they are not receiving the proper amount of blood at proper time and they have they are having uh, problems with exercise they cannot participate in regular activities so they have growth retardations now due due to these um, uh, problems they can also experience syncope because during exercise during exercise when there is a lot of deoxygenated blood going into the body they can f there if there is decreased blood supply to the brain they uh, they they may have syncope they may have syncope due to decreased blood pressure or they can even have a seizures or they can even have a cerebrovascular accidents now all these problems occur because of these uh, the, the defects and because of the decreased uh, oxygenation of the blood because the, the 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 blood that is going into the aorta it is not fully oxygenated it is not fully oxygenated and on top of that on top of that the the pressure the pressure of that uh, that the the right ventricle the pressure that right ventricle is applying is basically uh, divided it is divided so they do not have they cannot keep their normal circuit they cannot maintain their normal normal blood pressure which normally is maintained in by this heart in which there is no defect the right ventricle can properly pump blood into the lungs where it gets properly oxygenated and the left ventricle it can properly uh, blood pump there is no vsd there is no defect in the circulation so it can maintain the blood in circulation in exercise in any exertion so there is no chances of syncope normally so similarly the blood supply to the brain is normal during uh, normal circulation so the chances of seizure in a normal patient during exercise during exertion are uh, minimal and same is the case with the cerebrovascular accident if there is normal supply of blood to the uh, brain then the chances of any stroke or cerebrovascular accident are minimal normally in normal circumstances but in these patients they have high chances of syncope they have high chances of fellow spells cyanotic spells high chances of seizures and cerebrovascular accidents now another problem is because of the defects because of the congenital defects because of the abnormal movement of blood from the left to the right and from the right to the left and because of high pressure in the pulmonary artery there are chances of infective endocarditis there are chances of infective endocarditis then there is abnormal enlargement of the heart heart failure occur due to high pressure because the the left ventricle because the left ventricle the left side of the heart has to pump more because of these defects because of the vsd and because the blood has to circulate so many times because the deoxygenated blood cannot satisfy the needs of the body so the blood the heart has to do a lot of work due to which enlargement of the ventricles occur and due to which clots can form and emboli can occur they can form uh, clots blood can coagulate in the ventricles or the atrium and it can be dislodged which will form emboli similarly if infective endocarditis occur and the focus the infective material is spent uh, is basically uh, uh, sent or it circulates into the brain then cerebral abscess can occur as well so these are basically some complications basically the patient will present with cyanosis uh, fellow spells shortness of breath easy fatigability growth retardation and they will have syncopes they will have uh, they can also they can feel seizures 
they can have cerebrovascular accidents but they can develop complications like infectoendocarditis they can develop in complications like embolism cerebral uh, which can result in cerebrovascular accidents or stroke because some of the uh, blood vessel in the uh, brain can get uh, clot and then uh, they can develop infection in the brain which is cerebral abscess and which may basically be spread from the infecto endocarditis as well because there are congenital anomalies and due to abnormal movements there is there are high chances of infection like infecto endocarditis and cerebral abscess in these patients because of abnormal uh, abnormal movement of the blood and because of the congenital anomalies and finally this tetralogy of fellow it can be corrected with the help of surgery surgical correction is the answer for all these problems this pulmonary stenosis can be corrected the vsd can be corrected and the patient can improve and their life expectancy can improve suppose for example if these patients if these patients normally have a life expectancy of 3 to 4 years they can have a life expectancy of around 50 years with this surgery so to summarize this the tetralogy of fellow is basically a combination of pulmonary stenosis a vsd overriding aorta and right ventricular hypertrophy the patients with tetralogy of fellow have symptoms like cyanosis uh, cyanotic spells fellow spells shortness of breath easy fatigability growth retardation they may uh, experience syncopies seizures cerebrovascular accidents strokes they may develop infecto endocarditis they may get emboli in the brain or in other body parts and similarly they may develop infection in the brain which is basically cerebral abscess and the treatment of the whole uh, problem is is surgical correction of these problem so that's all about that's not all that's just a brief introduction because the, the this tof is a very very big topic and it can it can it can be discussed in detail each and every problem can be discussed in detail then we can also discuss that what are the clinical manifestation how clinically you can examine the patient of tof what will be the findings on examination then what will be the findings on echo ecg what what will be findings on um uh and geography so there are a lot of things that can be done but we will discuss those things in a medicine section so that's it for now and thanks a lot